Hi guys, how's it? It's Kren K. Garabo. Next part. I was actually doing quite a lot of admin prior to coming here to do this part because I'm trying to capitalize on all the daylight or at least the electricity hours that I can because I can't work normally in this land. Anyway, so let's just finish these um, fruit sorcery i already spoke about that the rest of them it's just a list but really richly mostly what these kinds of people are uh they walk in the initial couple of mentioned fruit of the sinful nature and they stumble they stumble like no man's business and i'm gonna give you guys the dreams that the law showed me uh concerning this and helping you hopefully to identify them in your life okay uh idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalries uh dissensions divisions dissensions and divisions i'm going to talk about that in a minute uh they came up a whole bunch in my dream like a very segregationist stealthily pursuit for the stealthily pursuing of you type disposition and it is precisely that they might sort of kind of segregate you or separate you from everybody that you can be easier to handle or deal with or bring low because you know divide and conquer okay uh envy drunkenness orgies and things like these now i've been dealing with people that are very extremely heavily involved in the occult um be they in my family or elsewhere and i did observe 180 changes one member of my family went from so soft so palatable such a loving uh, person generous absolutely generous as in every time we went out they were the ones that were paying everybody's bills because they could afford to could part ways easily with 20,000 rands to help out a friend type thing um very kind very palatable like just absolutely cool like relaxed man down to earth yeah they went from that to profane like verbally the words that they that came out of their mouth murderous homicidal saying things to me like i should just uh kill myself because i'm wasting time with this life thing that i'm doing obviously because everything of mine has fallen apart so why not just honorably exit out of here before i get too embarrassed by my fallenness by the life that i am in they went on to be stingy uh with hold support like literally pushing me off a bridge when they were once my one of my strongest support systems um and closest family members do you understand so that was a 180 that i observed and what happened with this individual is that they joined a secret society, some kind of an elite, funny little group of people that do strange things. Um, and it, it transformed them. It changed their personality. And it happened in just like overnight. And to this day, they are still kind of like that. They are yet to be delivered. It is such a strong man that literally you, you, the person is needs very dedicated deliverance in the sense that they need somebody to actively pray over them for them without throwing in the towel because they're going to be made war with by the demons in them and you have to be prepared to fast on their behalf but first they had to they have to get to a point where they want that kind of deliverance you don't get that inebriated with possession unless you have dabbled in the occult or done drugs and this human individual in my family is, is not the kind of person to do drugs so it was definitely not drugs that did this to them it was involvement in the occult plus the lord did also highlight to me that that was the reason why they changed that they transformed in such a negative way as then so uh, and again this same uh, individual in my family has so burned bridges with so many other of my family members i don't really know about what has happened with their friends because because you know don't know what's going on with that those relationships out there but they've so burned bridges in the family that they're essentially a lone ranger isolated now they don't have they they spend their lives with outsiders they spend their lives with people that don't belong to the family they don't attend family uh events and no the it's not similar the case is not similar to mine i am persecuted by my family because i'm a christian they have isolated and ostracized me against my will um they're the ones that have shunned me out of it this individual is the one that broke off that is the um, the level of demonic possession that happens they get ostracized and made to live in isolation by themselves by the devil he does that to them and the unfortunate thing is because they still long for human affection for human approval and all that stuff they they seek it out um out there and sometimes they look they actively look for other christians they not other christians those persons are a christian they don't profess but they look for christians because they 
understand the forbearance and the long suffering of believers. This family member of mine has observed my own forbearance with them, my long suffering. Um, but I also got to a point where I'm like, I'm not going to be dealing with all of your insanity. Like you can't just be so mean to me and expect me to just bounce back each time. Because that's the thing. Every time they recover from their dizzy spell, they just want to carry on from where they left off talking with me. Like nothing happened yesterday. It's extremely toxic. It's scathing. It's heartbreaking. So as a family member, I've distanced myself. However, it took a long time to get them. So because they, they know the forbearance of Christians and the rarity of it in society, they seek them out. So whenever a person professes Jesus out there, they, they latch onto them. They make like black jacks on wool and they say, Hey, how are you? I am, you know, Karabo. I am, you know, Fifi and, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. And then they also sort of kind of act as if though they're happy or palatable to talk the things of God. They're on and off. They're hot and cold. They are indecisive and so kind of untrustworthy and they don't want to lose their newfound long-suffering human being and so they just keep them in this like on off on off on off light bulb situation gaslighting just a whole bunch of gaslighting that is very taxing on the believer and the lord for these people because they're very ananiasi and safirai just get rid of them like cut them off sometimes the best help that you can give to someone is to just refuse to give yourself to them because they will drain the living daylights out of you. Uh, they need to know that they're in trouble and they need help. With this family member, I'm literally waiting, God willing. I mean, God, God, I pray with every ounce in me that the day is going to arrive when they are going to put their tail between their legs and say, look, I don't know where else to go, but I am aware that there is something very ominous, deeply, you know, entrenched in me that I can't get rid of by myself. And I know that you have this relationship with this Jesus guy. Can you please see if you can't help me overcome this darkness? Can we do what can I what can be done? And then I can, uh, you know, help her get delivered. Not by myself. I wouldn't need help. I would need like a church uh, type establishment thing. I would need a church. I would need strong men because you know they, these are the kinds of entities that can't come out with you with your frail little skinny arms. You you can't handle a person like that. They need to be pinned down. Uh, if at all that that's what need needs to happen. They need to be delivered. They, you know they've got some hard knock stuff that's going to come out with fasting and prayer and with great difficulty. So yeah. I'm waiting for the day that this individual will come and lay themselves prostrate before the feet of Jesus and be happy to accept the help of a Christian to get them to where they need to get. But my strategy um, so far has been to just cut them off because they're very heartbreaking, but they don't stop seeking out similar support out there if they've seen it. Unbelievers that claim to be believers, know how loving true believers are, but they lose the ones in their lives. And so they seek them out and become a burden for our, for other people. Uh, so be careful of these guys. They're likely they have got support out there that's happy waiting, just like I'm waiting for my family member to come back around to help them. But they think they don't need help. They think they're saved. They think they're cool. They think they're kosher. They think they're covered. And so they don't want to go anywhere. They're coming to burden you when they've actually got a support structure around them that they can just knock on the doors off and be like, look, I do need help. Um, help me out. I have got a strong man. This is what I've been involved with. That's the first thing that they need to come out with. They need to confess their involvement in the occult. They need to confess it. The kind, the, those are the kinds of strong men and st like strongholds that come into a person because of involvement in sorcery. Rarely ever does a person have such a transformation of personality in the absence of opening supernatural doors via either drugs or witchcraft. So that, that's what I, I'm trying to help you guys understand as, one, as something that y'all need to be out there looking out for. Such people cannot enter into the kingdom of God, so they're not saved. And what fellowship does light have with darkness? Do not waste your time. Now, let me, um, they tend to have somebody in their lives that, that, that can help them. They're just there to hassle you because you don't have context. You don't have understanding and you're going to be more forbearing than their exhausted relatives, exhausted friends, exhausted ecosystem, church, community. They are going to find you yet to experience all their nonsense and so they're going to wear you out 
in a way that their family members and friends and like what what is the church community etc will be like oh my goodness like you went and did a a solid on another one of us where if you were to share your experiences with them with those people those people would be like we tried like this person this the chick or this dude they did that to us too but you don't have access to them you don't have understanding of their like literally there are, there are many testimonials about these people in their own lives but they're running away from their own lives indeed it is written in god's word that do not help a person that is running away from God or from crime. They will be a fugitive for life and so they will make out of you a fugitive of life, uh, for life. The Bible says do not help them. In the Proverbs, do not help them. Do not help a person that's running away from something. They will be running for life. Don't help them. They are fugitives from God. They are prodigal sons that don't want to go home because they don't think it's broken. They're busy drinking it up a storm in a bar in a foreign land when they've got a cushy bed at home. They have got a father that is willing to embrace them, to bring them back home, kiss them, like cut up an animal and put some warm clothes on him, a bed at home, an inheritance that they can take. But they are chilling in a bar, drinking it up a storm, trying to see if they can't find a house very similar to the one that he fled from for in, in youth. And he finds a house like that or she finds a house like that. And they find houses like that that are similar to those in Christians that have no clue that they're prodigal sons from their own little stable. Prodigal sons elsewhere. Prodigal daughters elsewhere. They are fugitives. Don't help them. The Proverbs are very clear. Do not help them. Let's move to the next part. I actually want to find that proverb. I'm going to Google it now and read it to you so you can understand how biblical it is to cut these guys off. Next part. 